Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on today's edition of The Run-Up. My name is Nyamgul Agaji and today we'll be looking at various issues like, uh, as usual, we'll be talking to the managing director of, of, okay, let me start with what he was before now, the one-time commissioner for comments in Kanu State, now the managing director of Daura Dry Port. He will be talking to us about politics in Kanu. You know what it is, uh, a sitting governor who is of the ruling party, but also having a presidential candidate who seems to be the fourth person whenever they are calling the major political parties and people who are really making waves in uh, the political space leading up to 2023. I'm talking about Rabio Kwankwaso. So we'll be talking with the MD Daura Dry Port to tell us more about the politics back home there in uh, Kanu State. That will be uh, Honorable uh, Ahmed Rabiu, like I said. We'll also be looking at another very turny issue. Today, uh, we just heard the music, uh, the, we woke up to the news that Nupeng might be going on strike. In these hard times, where the bus drivers are, have gone on strike uh, for the next one week, things might be a little bit more difficult for the people who do not own cars by themselves. And now Nupeng is threatening to go on strike again because of some issues that need to be addressed and have not been addressed over the years. We will have someone talk with us today, and his name is Mr. Obaro. Obaro will be telling us what the issues are and possibly um, what needs to be done for the matter to be solved so that some of us will not have to go through all that. But because even if you own a car and Nupeng goes on strike, you will still be affected. Whether you jump buses, you own a car or anything, whether you even take flight, because you must, if you can take flight nowadays, that means you are what Nigerians will call a big man. You are an employer of labor, and then your people may not be able to come to work. So it affects everybody. Then we also have a governor who has always been on the news, uh, talking about uh, Governor Nyesom Wike. And the latest uh, statement he made was that River State is not decided yet who to vote for to become Nigeria's president. Wike is PDP. Uh, River State is predominantly PDP and a little bit of APC because uh, we had the Minister for Transportation uh, coming from there, Rotimi Amechi. But because of the problems that we are have, we're seeing in the PDP, Wike has been at loggerheads with his principal or his supposed principal, uh, Alhaji Atiku Abubakar and the president, um, the chairman of the party, Yocha Ayu. So right now, because of that problem, Wike is saying they are not decided yet who is going to be the person to vote for to become president. So we're looking at maybe some alignments and others uh, happening before 2023. But we'll have someone not from River State who will be talking with us. And I'm talking about Mr. Achike Chude. He will also be joining us on the program to comment on what Wike just said. But let's start with our first guest, Mr. Ahmed Rabiu, Managing Director of Daura Dry Port. Hello, Mr. Rabiu, and welcome to the program. Good morning, man. Thank you for having me. Okay, uh, well, Kanu has a presidential candidate of a different party and a sitting governor of a different party. How is that working out in Kano right now? Uh, I have not got you quite, quite yeah, but in full, but I think I have a fair idea of uh, uh, what you, you are seeking to hear. Okay. Uh, Kano has been uh, a political, if you like, uh, uh, nucleus uh, for not only northern Nigeria, but we can uh, pride ourselves to say for, for the country for the gift that God has given us of uh, being the most popular state and also most cosmopolitan where every Nigerian finds as a home and also the gift of a people that are really uh, positively politically disposed, able to take decisions on the basis of good reasoning, not on uh, short-sighted uh, centered uh, small group interest. Uh, from the time we had uh, the gift of Malamini Kano, 
and uh, the rest of the belonging to government at the center and uh, the subsequent developments to the recent one, if you like, that happened of the contest uh, of our own son, uh, of Blaise Mawari, Alain Bashir Osman Trofa, and uh, also of uh, the area of Naka Kampo, by the land, uh, Abiola, who won Kano, and uh, the son of Kano lost in Kano. Uh, because the Tano people are politically conscious, and they make their calculation positive. And to start uh, on that trend is to mention, if you like, uh, to remember that uh, before anybody stood in favor of uh, the Asuaju Bolahemet Telebu, uh, our governor had uh, strong, uh, strongly stood uh, in promotion of the candidature of uh, His Excellency Senator Bola Ahmed Tinubu uh, as the most preferred uh, candidate for the Nigerian presidency. And these are all special gifts that uh, you find only in Kano. And um, so the presence of uh, a candidate uh, on another party seeking presidency in Kano uh, does not actually in any way uh, change the dynamics in Kano. The Kano people uh, positively disposed and will do uh, what is right at every time and uh, that is why anything you look at uh, when it comes to uh, the interplay you find that our people in Kano are uh, very conscious of making the right decision and uh, boldly coming out to assert it. Uh, well, Honorable Rabiu, the movement of the presidential candidate of the uh, NNPP, uh, Rabiu Kwankoso, uh, known as the Kwankosia, we've heard yes. that it's a very strong movement as far as Kano is con concerned. How are you contending with that? How are you able to tackle that? Because you're still selling the candidacy of the APC presidential flag bearer, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. So how are you trying to win Kano? from a Kanu son to someone else? You can be rest assured that for as far as we are concerned, there is no concourse here at the moment. Uh, if you take the individual that is the figurehead, and then you look around him and say, where are the lieutenants who made the name tick? You find that they now belong to totally several different groups. For instance, uh, His Excellency, my governor, Abdullah Ubar Gandhiji, uh, belongs to the APC, and uh, you can be rest assured that he has pulled with him more than half of Concosia. The former and the founder of Concosia, they call uh, that the former secretary to the Council of Government, Ravi Suleiman Bichi, has moved, uh, is with Gandhiji now, and virtually a lot of the eggheads are with Gandhiji. And then some of the also uh, Concosia elements are in the PDP. And quite a number of other uh, elements of the Concosia are also in the PRG and in a few other parties. So what is left with the leader of the Concosia uh, movement uh, or group, if you like, uh, less than uh, perhaps 20% of uh, the people that really made, uh, made him to really uh, be that attractive. Uh, so and to also make him that strong. So, for, as far as APC is concerned, uh, the party NNPP is actually not a party to fear. If there is uh, any contender, it is not NNPP to the APC. Uh, we are very comfortable with uh, the kind of candidates we have put ahead. We have got uh, former a deputy governor, a serving deputy governor of the Excellency Governor Jan uh, Dr. Nasir Yusuf Gauna, and we also have got a very popular politician, uh, Murtala Selagaro is the running mate, and the two of them, uh, today, if you do any, uh, opinion poll, you will find that they are not only at the top, but the gap between them and those who follow them is, uh, definitely, a very, uh, uh, big one. So we are so comfortable that we have got the right candidate, not only at the stage and, uh, his excellency, Olama Tunibu, but in every other sphere, we have made uh, the deliberate attempt to make sure that internal democracy in our party dictated the trends of our activities. Okay. Well, so we do not have any fear uh, from NNPC. That's why I told you the story of late 
Alaji Bashir Osman Tova, uh, who was also at his time a reasonably popular person, but in spite of his being kind of person, uh, the Ali Iraqi Kampua Adiola came in uh, and won the election in Kano ahead of Alaji Bashir Tova, both of them are placed memory. So Kano people are not disposed to just ask our son, no. It has, the calculation is done by us all. You see, is that the right place to go? And do we take the right position? Okay, the names you have dropped, very big names uh, of the, forgive the word, but of the old stock. And a lot of people have said the 2023 election will largely be de decided by the youths. What are you doing to galvanize these youths to be on your side to make sure that the 2023 is in your favor? Because they may not be uh, very much in support of the uh, older generation, so to speak. Our leader, Gazabla Umar Ganduje, has uh, always been conscious of uh, the strategic role of the youth and women. And uh, even in his processes of empowerment and bringing them together for inclusiveness, he has had special programs for the youth and women, uh, who are actually the largest segment of the voting public. Uh, even all those involved in the, uh, the, in the film industry, uh, the, uh, those that are involved in the ICT world, and uh, literally all spheres where the youth are engaged uh, have been adequately uh, captured in uh, the cycle of inclusiveness so that they don't only form part of the movement, but they are empowered to be comfortable and uh, to be attracted to vote and ensure sustainable uh, good governance that has been installed by Gabrakna Umar Gandhi. Some people say that the politics in the North is for the North, that Northerners, that's what they feel. Northerners feel that way. And here we are having... No, very I, have not, I have not got you. Can, can you come again? Sorry. Some people politics feel... Politics for the North is... Uh, okay, let me rephrase. Some people feel that when there is a very strong candidate from the North, the Northerners will never leave their own to vote for someone from somewhere else. And that's why some of the candidates, even we have heard them campaigning and saying that it is not for North. <laughs> so, I, how do I, I think uh, those, that, that is a very, it's a very unfair judgment. Uh, those people who know us, uh, if they had been to Kano, uh, in my introduction, I said Kano is the most popular state. Kano is also the most cosmopolitan state. The only state that Trump showed up with us is Lagos in terms of cosmopolitan nature disposition. We are a people that the moment you come in from anywhere in the world, you drop your bag in the hotel or in the market, you are welcome and you are made to feel at home and you remain at home and made comfortable. We are not a people that have those uh, narrow considerations. That is why even Lego today pride itself with the contribution to its economy by our two sons, Aliko Dangote and the summer Gladio. These two Nigerians, that have settled and spread their tentacles in Lagos and other parts of the Southwest and the South South and the North Central, they have not, if they have any matrix down tendencies limited, they will not have gone outside their home. So we are great people and uh, the nature of, uh, the hospitality nature of our uh, people is the reason why today every tribe in Nigeria has at least 10% of its population resident in Kano doing business in Kano, living comfortably in Kano. If by any means we have that limitation, we wouldn't have voted a viola uh, in, uh, against our own son, Bashir Tofa. Both of them are blessed memory. We voted a viola. The records are there. They are not far away. And in all the interactions we've had in the past, if you look at them, you find that the northerner is a very liberal person generally. And the northerner was from the north central, from the north west or from the north east. There is nothing like cold north that some people try to create it to make some people feel they are not northerners or some are more northerners than others. We are northerners and our attitude is generally very receptive, very hospitable, very kind, very considerate, and a people that have been placed with a large population by virtue of which you must ex ensure the existence and the maintenance of the rule of law. And that is why you find generally, except for the challenges that come, the challenges we have recently, we are the most peaceful zone in the entire country. Okay. And therefore, our political disposition is also a positive one and a good one. Okay, just just a quick one before we wrap it up. Um, 
if you say Kano is a cosmopolitan uh, place, it's populated and whatever you have used to uh, describe Kano, it also means that there are people of various faiths in Kano state. Now, one of, the, one of the issues that uh, people have been grumbling about the APC is the presentation of two candidates or, or the presidential candidate and his running mate of the same faith. So how are the Christians and other faiths in Kano taking this? Or if they're taking it well, what did you do to bring them to your fold? Beautiful. Now, uh, Gabriel Omar Ganduja, from his first day in office, the first, even before he became the governor, while he was deputy governor, had been in charge of uh, making sure that there was uh, a peaceful coexistence among different tribes, uh, religious groups, and other social interests. And when he became governor, he put that in a very important task, which he really uh, put a lot of energy on. They had always been meetings with all the different Christian groups, with different with Islamic sects, and all those and trying to galvanize and let everybody feel he belongs and give everybody his right in the stairs. Now, the issue of the Muslim-Muslim ticket, things do happen as uh, a child of circumstance. We are an evolving democracy. Time will come that when you ask the name of the individual, you are not concerned about his religion, because your concern will be his capacity to deliver. Now, the team that we have now in the form of Bola and uh, Kashin, it's a child of circumstance. It came in the way it did, not because there is disrespect for our Christian brothers or anything, but it was a, politics is always a game. You look at the catchment, you look at the scheme that when you are going to sell, I'm sure you have been observing how Kashmir Shatima has been contributing to sell the project of APC. If you have somebody, there are a large number of our brothers Christians all over the place, you could have somebody even better than him. But in scheme of party politicians, it is not the competence of the individual that qualifies him to be appointed, but his belonging. If you do not have in your fold such individual, or if there are other challenges or inhibitions, then when you come in and the selection points a person that comes in to uh, be able to support the ticket to win, then that has to happen. So we have taken charge all the time of our Christian brothers around and communicated with them. And uh, they also have seen that the candidate of Kashi Chetima is not coming on a religious ground. It is just a coincidence that he is a Muslim. And coincidentally also the black bearer is also a Muslim. A mere coincidence. It was never decided and deliberate to bring the two Muslims together. And uh, yeah. this has happened before. When Adiola was on a Muslim Muslim ticket and he won. Uh, you know how it has happened? Uh, he won the election ago, it was uh, the June 12th issue, the factor of annulment. But the key issue is that people okay. elected them, and we believe, even the leader of the campaign is a Christian. He's a Christian, the, the director of the uh, Bola Kashim ticket, ATC, is a Christian. And the Christians are very prominently established in the scheme, and they know they are respected, and they know the coincidence of a flag bearer and his enemy, a coincidence of selection. And they are born out of so many actions that take place. Okay. And therefore, uh, we do not believe there is any challenge imposed by that. We believe the elections will come. Our Christian brothers and the Muslim brothers will work together. And even those who do not have any faith will all work as Nigerians and ensure that the job, the man for the job, the most competent individual, Tabola Ahmed Ilubu, is elected for the job. Okay. Okay, I, I admire your confidence, and I hope that it will translate to victory. If if God, it is we by the grace of God. So good we luck. We are all praying, your, and uh, we are also working for it. It should uh, be right. Good luck in your endeavors. We we are we are praying for the best man to win, whoever that will be. And when yes. he wins, we hope that the entire Nigeria will be better for it. Thank you we'll so much, for it by the Honorable God. Ahmed Rabiu. Uh, thank you so much for being a part of our program today. But um, and God bless. By next week, Go sorry, just, just yes. a moment. By next week, we might be calling you to tell us more about the Daura Dry Port, how that works, well. and everything around it. So be on standby. Okay. As but, but Thank you so a, much. It's a quick one. In a minute, in a minute I'll just say the Island Dry Port is an international port of origin and destination from which cargo could be exported to anywhere in the world. And that will also be an ultimate, that is also an ultimate destination for cargo from anywhere in the world, any continent, 
right into Kano, the Wajiki Kumbazo Loka Gamma. Okay. So it's a place that everybody will want to know about, and uh, we'll just really we help boost the Nigerian economy and improve our foreign exchange earnings. We will, we, will have time for, we will have time for details of that by next week. So get okay. yourself prepared. We'll All the information we need to know, we will get them by next week. Thank you so much for today. Thank you, for being Thank you so much. Great pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So that was uh, Honorable Ahmed uh, Rabiu, the Managing Director of Daura Dry Port. How that works, what importance it is to the economy, and everything we need to know. We'll find out next week when we bring him on the program again. Right now, we'll take a short break. When we return, we'll be talking about Nupeng threatening to go on strike. Stay with us. With a population of over 200 million, Nigeria is the most populous black country on earth. We are diverse, strong, vibrant, and mostly young. We are yet to reach the land of our dreams. We can write, tell, and be our own story. From the economy, education, security to politics, you name it. We can build the Nigeria of our dreams if we work together. Join us on The Run-Up to discuss and proffer solutions to the issues confronting our polity every weekday. I am Bayo. I am Uche. And I am Nyamgul. We invite you to The Run-Up, 11 a.m. Monday to Friday on this channel.